<clears throat> Greetings, brothers and sisters from the four corners of the world. I hope everyone is having a blessed day, afternoon, and evening in your perspective lands. All right. Oh, here we go, brothers and sisters. We've, we've come a long way. The war on the true promise. We've come a long way. We're not finished. Okay. Really, uh, I mean, wow. <clears throat> All right. So um, from part eight, this is now part nine. Uh, you know, we I showed you guys in the sibling oracles. Now we're going to uh, bring it back around and kind of give you um, where this truth is supposed to come to and why this uh, this war is becoming. Okay. Now, <clears throat> to start off, brothers and sisters, I want to read. Daniel 12 again, in verse 12 and 10. It says, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So here, there was a classification of two types of people in the world. There's the wicked, and there's the what? The wise. Okay, then we go into Malachi, chapter 3, go all the way into the end, verse 17 and 18, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day, when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So at this time in the world, you're seeing quite a lot of things. You're seeing confusion for some people, you know, classify themselves with the term Christian. Um, you're in a lot of people in the um, biblical arena of, uh, of following Christ or what they believe to follow Christ, which are not really, but in the Western world and uh, more of those developed societies, even some non-developed of what they call non-developed. So you got like Europe and Canada and um, America and uh, Mexico and Australia, you know, different places around the world where they uphold to kind of the Constantine rule of law, right, with Christianity. And now you have, now the world has done something that they weren't expecting to put Muslims in the mix, right? And I've shared this throughout all of this series. And it has really blown a lot of people's minds. I said, man, what's going on here? Okay. So it was our job to discern. In fact, uh, let me pull it up. One second, I'll keep my voice. Let me pull it up. Uh, it was our job to discern this letter here. It was our job to discern this letter about what the three world wars. Okay. And, of course, everything is, you know, strategically happening. Brothers and sisters, I would like to share with you before we move further. Keep in mind that evil does not run the world, okay? 
I want you to keep this in mind. Keep in mind that evil does not run the world. So though these things may be unfolding right before our eyes, you must understand, and the same token, why the Most High allowed them to do such things. I want you to think about this, right? How ignorant of Satan, if I don't want you to be saved, if I don't want you to understand the truth or the severity of things, why would I ever publish it? Right? If I don't want you to know something, why would I ever make it public? But you see, that goes to show you the power of the Most High, because evil would never tell us, right? Only the Most High would reveal it to the people. So I want you to understand, and a lot of people say, man, why does, you know, God allow evil? I saw this before uh, sometime this week, and um, I was like, God, the Most High doesn't control. He doesn't allow evil. You understand? There's a God of righteousness where only righteousness can happen. And then there's a God of evil where only evil can happen. And, and you may say, and, and you see the problem is many people don't believe that. Why? Because when you see riches and diamonds and mansions and everything someone wants and doing and people who are doing evil, which we see all in the world, and people who are not serving the most high, what what do we think? A common person thinks, man, they're doing really good. Well, now you have just fallen what? Suspect to the scripture. Woe unto those who call evil good. Because you visualize a lifestyle and finances as good. Right? That's calling evil good. When 12 times out of 10, these individuals wouldn't even serve the Most High if the Most High gave them everything they want. <laughs> right? So, no, the Most High does not create evil. He gives choice. Okay. Now, I want you to think about this. For someone who says, oh, man, I wish, I wish the Most High would just create us all or, or control us all. And if you sit there and think about it, when you and I were in sin, we didn't ask the Most High to control us, did we? Do you notice that? So he gave you the opportunity to know what it's like to be sorry. <laughs> he gave everyone the opportunity to know what it's like to be appreciated. I want you to remember that next time someone says, oh, well, if God is so great, why did he create evil? He, he never created evil. It's just that his creation decided not to listen to the creator, and they decided to be creators of their own things, which was evil. For example... Nowhere in scriptures do you see any of the prophets going to smoke and drink alcohol, right? But somehow, some way, shape, or form, people have convinced themselves that smoking and drinking is okay. That's 
people, not the Most High. You see? Somehow, someone has convinced billions of people that you can live any lifestyle you want and go to, per se, a church or a mosque and pray and hear a sermon every now and then or every week and live how you want six days a week. Just for God to say, I love you and welcome to the kingdom. See, creation has created their own ideology, their own doctrine, their own ways. So when you're going, brothers and sisters, to discern these things, this is why it's important to remove tradition out of the equation. Because tradition is nothing more but the upholding of lies. That's all it is. Okay. Now, we are, I mean, the world, the world is moving, brothers and sisters. And I shared in the, the previous lesson when reality kicks in, hey, we're over people saying, can you prove to me or I need more time? We're over that. I'm going to go leave you over there. And the next time when you turn around and look for me, you will not find me. I do not care. And guess what? Neither should anyone else who wants to get to the kingdom. Why do I say that? Because Christ gave the parable of what? The virgins, right? Matthew 25, the wise and foolish. So by the time you go back and do what you want to do, and then it hits you on the way back like, hey, we should have listened. Well, let me go and find that person. We're gone. And this is why people, you know, and once you realize Matthew 19, where you were cut off and you had to give up things, okay, give up family, friends, home, so forth and so forth, right? And then you hit Matthew 25. All those individuals who you were trying to help want to come running back to you. And then you say, well, in, those, in that time where you were mocking me behind my back, making fun of me, saying I was crazy, saying I had no light, saying all these things, why don't you go back to the same individuals that entertained that conversation? Because what's happening now, brothers and sisters, Daniel 12 and 10, Malachi 3, 17 and 18, the Most High is saying, I want all my children to recognize the what? The righteous from the wicked, the sheep from the goats. This is the time. That's why I sat there and said, we don't have time. Okay. And I have tons of videos to share with y'all today. This is, this is going to be an amazing lesson. <laughs> okay. But I want everyone to understand you're supposed to discern not only the times, not only yourself, not only the knowledge but now those around you. And the key emphasis is what? The righteous versus the wicked and those who serve God and those who don't. And that's why I said, and I'm gonna say it in this lesson now, if anyone opposes what I'm teaching, kick rocks. <laughs> you know why? Because most of the individuals 
In fact, all of the individuals who have opposed the lesson, and then, and I have no problem. All the comments can be there, and sometimes YouTube takes the, the, the comments out because people are cursing and saying all kind of things and, you know, putting voodoo and witchcraft upon, you know, myself and whatever the case is, right? Because people have done that, right? There's never any reading. So, for example, there was Christians who will say, oh, the Quran is wrong. There's Muslims who have told me, oh, the Bible is wrong, but yet the Quran says to start with the Torah and the Gospels first. Okay, uh, we're, we're crushing every lie, all right, in this ministry. So I want that to be very clear that the scripture stands and this is the time. This is the time where you are supposed to discern. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, everything you say to someone will get you in trouble. I want you to understand, we no longer live in a time of I'm sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> we no longer live in a time of, oh, I I I'm sorry, I didn't know it was gonna be that bad. We no longer live in a time like that. Oh, I apologize for saying that, that's not what I meant. We no longer live in that time. Oh, this is just joking. You looking out your window? Are you watching your TV? Are you going to the store down the street in the cities? Are you looking on your phone? What part of joking do you see in this world now? What part? Of... So now we're in the time of, so help me. If you say the wrong words, you're getting cut off. <laughs> you're getting cut off. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Because now is the time to discern who serves God and who does not. With that being said, Let's begin. We're going to take it from Psalms 83, brothers and sisters. Psalms 83, 1 through 18. All right. And I have some more scripture, but I have some uh, some videos too, about eight of them. Most high when we get through all of them. All right. Psalms, brothers and sisters, chapter 83. So this lesson, brothers and sisters, I did call it about calling God's children into remembrance. And with everything that's going on, it's very important because all of this is, <laughs> I mean, hey, what, what, what are we thinking here, right? So for example, In Luke 21, 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So the children of Israel are led into all nations. Me don't know who those people are over there. I just know what Christ said, that they're Gentiles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right, let's move back to Psalms 
23. And yes, it is important. Okay, some one may maybe ask, well, why haven't you mentioned and did like this and that? And I'm not going to sit there and beat the dead horse. Either people are going to be prejudiced and racist, or people are going to read front to back and fully understand. Okay, and accept that Satan is the greatest deceiver. And yes, you've been duped. <laughs> We've all been duped. All right. We've all been deceived. You're, you're not just some perfect, perfect person who's just was born into Catholicism or born as a Baptist or a non-denominational Christian or a Muslim or, or a Hindu, right? Everyone has been duped. No one just is born in the right religion. You have to search for the most high. Satan wasn't going to make it that easy. Okay. Satan, and, and, and we fail to remember, it is only the most high who cannot be deceived. Okay. Even angels were deceived. So don't put yourself so high to believe that you know everything when simply we have to read and we still don't even know 1% of the knowledge in the world. Okay. Remember that. Psalms 83 and 1 reads, Keep not thou silent, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up thy head. The head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut off from that from being from being a nation that the, the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. Now, there is no one else's history in the world that matters other than the people who are in Israel today. And I will wait. Now watch this. I go to Ethiopia. I go to Djibouti, you go to Sudan, you go to Yemen, you go to you go to Qatar, you go to Japan, you go to Korea, you go to Iran, you go to Kuwait. Everyone wants to show you their culture. Okay. But there's only one group of people who can say my culture is greater than all yours and you mean nothing to me. I want you to understand that. Crazy, kind of, right? Quite crazy. Quite crazy. Now, <clears throat> hate the term Africa because <clears throat> it's not, you know, it's technically a Roman Empire name. You know, uh, Africanus was a Roman emperor. But the geographical land of Africa, all right, including Saudi, because the Bible says that Solomon was in Sheba, which Sheba went all the way to not Ethiopia, but Yemen and Oman and the UAE, that whole region. <laughs> But anywho, they have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. Let's make sure that whenever they voice their feelings and their opinions, that no one will care to remember or question. Okay. Now, we see these individuals in the Middle East, as they would call it, hate the term, but as they would say in the Middle East, we see that there's two nations fighting against one another. 
there's the Arab Palestinians and there's the so-called Jewish people. Now Egyptians <laughs> are on that border. You have Saudi. You have Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, UAE, Oman, Yemen, and it says, but people are just looking at one person. I want you to understand that when and, and brothers and sisters, I'm sharing with you everything that the Most High is telling me to bring to you. Because when this war finally goes full throttle, the Most High is going to obliterate the whole region. Do you know why? Because all of them, you cannot deceive a world without the entire region. What? You cannot deceive a world without an entire region. And this is why the Most High said, for they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom, Ishmaelites, of Moab, the Hagarenes, Gebal, Ammon, Amalek, the Philistines, and the inhabitants of the Tyre, Assur, also joined with them, and they are, they have hoping the children of Lot, Salah, do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sarah, as to Jibin, at the brook of Kassan, or Kaisan which perished at Endor, and they became as dung for the earth, make their nobles like Oreb, yea, and all their princes as Zeba and Zalomna. Excuse me, did I say that? Thank you. Sorry about that. I had to blow my nose. Okay. Yea, all their princes as Zeba and Zomna, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Now, what is the houses of God? Somebody? Anybody? Okay, here we go. The houses of God. Hmm, wouldn't it be where people congregate, right? Right? Houses of God, right? They said, what? Let us take... Look what it says, let us occupy, let us seize, let us rob, let us inherit, let us impoverish, let us ruin, let us cast out, let us consume, let us destroy, let us disinherit, let us dispossess, let us drive out, let us enjoy, let us expel. Let us make them poor. Let us make them come to poverty. The houses of God's possession. Or God's possessions. Now, you had times like uh, 
the Ottoman Empire and the Caliphates before then, the, the Catholic Crusaders and the Knights Templar, and all these individuals, all they did was murder, 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 and try to distort and change facts of God. That's all they did. Yeah. But you want to see, what have I told you before, brothers and sisters? History is told by the victor. History is told by the one who stands victorious. Because if all your opponents are dead, then of course this was the uprule, right? Of course this was real, right? Hmm. Remember, Christ said, the time of the Gentiles, who will be the individuals who the Most High would be looking for blood because of what they've done to his land, everyone in this portion. Now, of course, other people have began to endorse. You have NATO and, you know, the U.S., right? And all of them. But overall, brothers and sisters, you see, you cannot lie to the world without a plan. A plan, brothers and sisters, to divide with lies. Now, here's the beautiful part of this. Tabernacles. These are the higher echelons, okay, if you will. These are the high people, all right? These are the high people. Those who you look to as politicians who pass down the power every year, who are, wait, immune from power. And, 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 and don't even get me started about immunity because isn't it so crazy how, and I'm just going to take the U.S. And, and Europe, how politicians can commit the same crimes that us common people will do and they'll always be immune from it. It's as if they get no judgment. Why? Because the face of the judges are all dark and black, just like the book of Job says. So they've made rules for them and rules for you and I. And so these are the ones who have said, let us become a confederate. And then you go back to that word confederate. Let us be a confederate. Now, a federate, a league, and yeah, I guess what? The Arab League, because this is mostly of the Arabic League, right? All those nations, they understand who the children of Israel are. And do you understand, and, and a lot of my Muslim brothers and sisters, I, I want you to recognize this, because you'll have these imams, right? And they'll say, yes, yes, you know, shame on them, and Allah would want you to go and fight for these Palestinians, right? Do you understand that they understand? And maybe not all imams, but most of them understand that when the Most High destroys all of that, you have no choice but then to turn to who the Most High gave his covenant to, which is still <laughs> the children of Israel. 
Don't believe me? Let's check this out. Check, check, check this out, brothers and sisters, okay? For my, my Muslim brothers and sisters, okay? <laughs> and, and I'm going to, I'm going to put it right on the screen, right? So y'all see, so no one say I'm making this up, okay? This is a Quran, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in. Y'all see it now. Y'all see children of Israel. Okay. What about times? Okay, here we go. We're going to go um, out August. And I'm going to. I'm going to show you this. Okay. Here we go. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. As you know, it's quite long. I should put it in a... Here we go, right here. Okay, this is the dunes, okay? Chapter 46, hold on, verse 10. And it says, <clears throat> now, and we'll start from verse, mm, verse 8 here, right? Or do they say he has invented it? Say, if I have invented it, you will not possess for me the power of protection from the law at all. He is most knowing of that which you are involved. Sufficient is he as witnesses witness between you and me, and he is forgiving the merciful. Say, I am not something new among messengers, nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. I only follow that which is revealed to me, and I am not, and I am not but a clear warner. Say, have you considered if it was from Allah and you disbelieved in it while at wit a witness from the children of Israel had testified to something similar and believed while you were arrogant. Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. And those who disbelieve say, those who believe, if it had been truly good, they would have not preceded us to it. And when they are not guided, they will say this is an ancient falsehood. Now, and before it was the scriptures of Moses to lead and as mercy. And this is a confirming book in an Arabic tongue to warn those who have wronged and as good tidings to the doers of good. No, no. Hold on. That's where it gives the gives the scripture. That's one part. 
I'm looking for is the other one, which, but uh, just for the sake of time, oh, it's it's got us under covenant. Let's get it somewhere. Okay. I want you to look at this really quickly. Al Agaf, it says, and we did give cert give the children of Israel the scripture and judgment and prophethood, and we provided them with good things and prefer preferred them over the worlds just like it tells us in scripture in the bible in the book of isaiah i believe it is that the other nations are as a drop in a bucket we prefer you of all people you are the apple of the most high's eye so once again even in the quran why aren't the muslims why aren't the imams telling you that all order still goes back to the children of Israel. They're all complacent. They're all complicit in this. I want you to understand that. You sit there and say that people who read the Bible are wrong, but it says that Allah gave the children of Israel the scripture. This is why I say I don't sit there and argue with people. You don't read, don't talk to me. We're not entertaining foolishness. We're not entertaining foolishness. So, once again, going with Psalms 83, when they became a confederate, they teach outside of the Most High. They teach outside of Abraham. They teach outside of, listen here, and they change ways. Uh, don't get it twisted. The imams will call you to prayer, but they will not teach what's correct. Same thing as a Christian pastor. They'll call you to the church, but they won't teach you what's right. As long as you are are in that church or in that mosque, as long as you are praying, and as long as you are giving tithing or zakat, you're good to go. Prove me wrong. My Christian brothers, my Muslim brothers and sisters, prove me wrong. Hmm. So all these people have been complicit in saying, let's come together. Let's make them a remembrance no more. No more. No more. Now, you know, you know what was slick? What was real slick is when Satan came down, right? Satan was thrown down and he said, you know what? I just hate the most high in every creation he's going to love. But you see, that's real hard because he loves every creation he's ever created. So I got to test the waters here. I'm going to create a really bad scene, right? And I just want to see what the most high is going to do. Because Satan is not all knowing. Let's, let's keep that in mind. He said, let me test the water and see what the Most High is going to allow me to do. Because he said I have a short time, right? So I'm going to test the water and see how angry I can just tick him off, you know? Get his attention, you know? And, and no offense, but you know how, like, some women will try and get under the skin of men just to see how far they can go, right? Like that, okay? Same, same thing, but even worse with Satan. You, you you see, Satan said, all right, 
let me let me see how the Most High really feels about his people, because all I seen was Abraham and I mean, uh, Adam and Eve, right? He kicked me out, right? That's all I seen. And then life started populating and things started happening in the world. And he's like, okay, I can see a little bit of the Most High's mercy. I could see it. Let's try and ruin it. Let's bring in Lamech. Come on, let's let's bring in him. See what he does. Right? And every generation passed down and passed down and passed down and passed down until you get to know. Right? And so I'm gonna take one of those three sons, and they lied to you. They told them it was Ham, but it was really Japheth, right? Who did the evil. And I'm going to take one of those three sons and I'm going to convince the world that one of those three sons was evil while the other one was good, right? Hmm, let's do Ham. And so all the history now comes back to Ham all the dark people, all they're cursed, all the this, all the they're of no value, right? And then I want I want y'all to recognize this, right? <laughs> the most high didn't create race. He created ethnicity. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. He created the sons. And lineage, nowhere did the Most High create race. Race was created by those who wrote doctrine to then say, oh, look, Ham is known by being dark-skinned people, right? <laughs> Which <laughs> technically was wild, right? It's wild. It's racist. So the people who started history were the first ones who were prejudiced technically right anyhow moving forward you have these individuals and satan's like okay all right shem we definitely <laughs> definitely ain't, ain't touching him who could i get around me Ham, uh, Ham really following his brother, you know, Shem. I mean, he's young, you know, but and Japheth, it just, you know, it don't look like really, he really in it to win it, okay? He went after Japheth and got him, okay? Now, you're getting off the boat, 40 days of rain, flooding, world is reshaping, okay? Things start to come up. Civilizations start to build up. I mean, there were other people other than, no, read the books of remembrance, right? right? But what happened is, the Most High cleansed the earth of all that wickedness. And Japheth and other individuals, they uh, started to take back the wickedness, right? So I want you to understand from that moment of what? The flood. All the things that happened. Think about it. You had the, the fallen, right? And laying with the women, right? All these things, right? And just to, for it to be repeated again, right? Hmm. You don't think Satan was testing the water? Because he was like, hey, I know the children, the most highest creation is going to die, but I'm not. So I want to see what I'm going to do with them, right? And so Satan has had this time to really maneuver and just play along with God's creation because honestly we're we're kind of ridiculous let's let's be real the most high's creation even though we're made in his image when we're away from the most high we're quite ridiculous 
we're unbearable we're spoiled we want everything we play the victim in everything we just want everything our way you know we could care less about the most high when we're away from the most high this is really real right and so satan is observing this and he's like okay all right years later all right you have abraham and lot you have Sodom, right, coming on. Abraham, Sarah go and meet up with Lot. And then Abraham send uh, Sarah away. He goes to Sodom, right, five cities of Sodom. Goes and saves Lot, tells Lot, hey, come on. Then I want to go. Hey, angels is coming. All right, All right? Two angels come, knock on the door. Hey, let's roll. Hey, come in, come in real quick. A few moments later, doom, 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 doom. Hey, we saw those two men. Come on now. You know how we get down in Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels put in God's work in Sodom and Gomorrah. Told Lot and his wife not to look back. Lot's children didn't look back. Lot didn't look back. Lot's wife was stubborn. She was a person who had to see it to believe it. As if, as if smelling fire and brimstone wasn't good enough. But anywho, right? And so you have all these things, all these things, right? It's all formulated. You have Abraham you know, having his children, right? First he had with Hagar, Ishmael, then with Sarah, Isaac, right? And Ishmael wanted to kill Isaac. And Hagar, so I want you all to understand, Hagar, who was the handmaid, technically the servant, she was given a blessing, but her children didn't screwed it all up because they took the blessing and said, hey, we're going to take the most high's kindness for granted, and we're going to go against his people. If you think about it, right, because they got the promise before Jacob and his children came on the scene. But why are they in the crosshairs of being confederate to making Israel obsolete? This is where the what they would call Arab should have just shut their mouth and just, hey, we're going to be with our brothers and sisters. And there's nothing you can do. But you see, what you fail to realize, the UAE, what you fail to realize, Qatar, what you fail to realize, Kuwait, Saudi, Oman, what you fail to realize is that the history is there and God never forgets. And so, you see these places as tax free. Do you know do you want to know why they're tax free? Because they stole all that gold. Go ahead, look up the documentaries. UAE stole the gold from Africa. Go ahead and look it up. Look up the slave trading in Qatar. Look it up. Yeah, they became confederate, all of them. So we're going to take not only the text of the Bible, we're going to take your ways too. We're going to take your clothes too, because Christ wore tonics, everyone wore tonics. We're going to take everything. We're going to take your, 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 your head covering, because I've read the Quran, 
and not once does it tell women to cover their heads. That's in the Bible only. <laughs> right? We're going to take everything and place it in our religion and tell our people to shut up and listen. Because that's what imams do. They just say shut up and listen. Most Muslims, Muslims don't even read the Quran. Let's just be real. They don't even read it. You know why they don't read it? Because the imams tell them five times a day is the most important thing to do, which is pray. And I'm not taking anything away from prayer, but what good is a holy text if all you do is pray? You know nothing about the message. That was for the world, right? You wouldn't know anything. So this is also a part of consulting together as one. And, and this is no different, brothers and sisters, from Catholics and Christians either, because you'll get pastors in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and different regions in the world, Europe. You'll get pastors to come and do a, a counseling service with you, or they'll have every Wednesday and Thursday Bible studies. But for you to build a personal relationship with God and read front to back the Bible, they would never encourage it. <laughs> They're Confederate too. Do you want to know why? In the U.S., is that 501c3? That's called being Confederate. Let me keep you away from certain books of the Bible so you don't question the world. Right? Hmm. Let's keep going, right? So all these nations have become confederate. And now, in the world, what you're seeing now is, is, is crazy things happening. Like, oh my goodness, what's, what's going on? And why is the world the way it is? And, and uh, why is the world the way it is? Well, <laughs> and, and a lot of people are in confusion. Why? You're seeing things like this. Fair use. This is a watershed moment for Palestine, for justice and for international law. Israel's occupation has been declared unlawful by the World Court, which has stipulated that it must be terminated completely and as rapidly as, as possible. Now, now, look, look. They even said the, the international criminal court has said that everything that the Israelis are doing is illegal and it must stop now. The court also found that illegal Israeli occupation violates the UN Charter, human rights and international humanitarian law. The court further unequivocally declared that all Israeli settlements in the occupied Palestinian territory are illegal and must be dismantled and that all Israeli settlers must be evacuated. The court declared that Israeli illegal occupation not only violates but eviscerates the Palestinian people's right to self-determination in their own land, including the right to their own state. This ruling couldn't be more timely or solely needed. The Palestinian people have endured unbearable suffering and injustice for decades. This ruling is a vindication of their steadfastness and perseverance. This right must not, must no longer be denied or deferred. The court made clear that the Palestinian people are the only sovereign in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem 
and that the international community is under an obligation not just to reaffirm the Palestinian people's right to self-determination, but to see to it that this right is implemented immediately. All states and the UN are, are now under obligation not to recognize the legality of Israel's presence in the occupied Palestinian territory. And then they cut the video. Hey, listen here. That's just the beginning of what? Bring up the land, so to speak. But the Bible says, Luke 21, it ain't happening. So this point is for show, right? But you see, it's kind of crazy how maybe 10, 20 years ago, hey, if the law says that you're guilty, you're guilty. You go to court, you lose. Hey, just do your time, okay? Fast forward to now. Hey, you stole the election. Hey, let's go run up the, the Capitol building. Hey, you know, free our president. Hey, no, 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 it's no longer, hey, if you do the crime, hey, you, you were wrong. Why are you always looking to get out of something? Why you always want a handout? <laughs> Isn't it so funny how the times are changing to turn people into hypocrites? It's kind of strange, but you know what? All of it is because everything is backfiring. Okay. Now, they became a confederate. And they really hid behind one another, right? And how do they do it? They do it with intention. Hear from this woman. Let's talk about it. And excuse the language. Some Jews are white, like me. But now, let's talk about it. Some Jews are white, like me. But our whiteness is conditional, and that's why it's different. We are not always white. We are white when it is convenient. We are white when our whiteness boosts the numbers of white people in order to oppress people of color. We are white until we're fucking not. And when we're not, we are almost hated in a different way because we can fool you with our whiteness. We can assimilate, which is why the man with the name that starts with H puts stars on our jacket. So we wouldn't trick anybody. Judaism is both a religion that you- The man with H, she's referring to Hitler. Can practice and ethnicity. You can be Jewish and not practice Judaism. And although there are Jews of every color and across every country, if you are a white Jew, you are Jewish first before you're white, if that makes sense. Which is why white supremacy is just as frightening for us as it is for people of color. Because those same people, there's like a Venn diagram of ignorant hate and Jew hating and LGBTQ plus hating and people of color hating, there is a center there where we're all lumped in as others. Now, I'm not trying to say my experience as a Jew is in any way the same kind of experience as somebody who walks around this earth with their otherness on their skin. I have benefited from white privilege my whole life, but I am always aware that my whiteness is conditional. It can be rescinded at any time. And that's a scary place to be. It's almost like the Jewish community is being told, listen, you can be white right now, but if you fuck up, if you make too much noise, if you cause too much trouble, you're out. Because let's not forget race is a social construct. And the man with the name that starts with H called us a race in order to identify our inferiority and to other us from the rest of the white population. Well, there you go. As I said, they're not all the same people. And I am for the Bible. Now, some people are not right. 
some people are wrong. And some people understand that if they can tag in along with other people, they can get more perks in life. Is that what she was not just saying? She can identify as an uh, disproportionate people, the LGBT and the black community, right? And then, then when you want to step out, you step on out and say, hey, this is what I am. That's what she's referring to. That's called privilege. Now, this is all a confederate. To what? Put those who are truly the children of Israel of no remembrance. So really, you could say remove, right? And we're becoming a world full of truth where I'm at this point, you, 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 you're just, you're just a wild man or woman. If you can't see, I mean, it's, it's, you, you couldn't go three minutes without finding the truth, truth. Okay. So before I go to the next video, I would like to be a critic of my own brothers and sisters as I am Israel. Okay. True Israel. All right. Jeremiah 4 and 21 says, how long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? But my people is foolish and they have not known me. They are sottish children and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Now, we are going to be 100% fair. We, my brothers and sisters in the four corners of the world, we chose not to serve the Most High, okay? Our forefathers and foremothers, us included as well, but they were the ones before us. So we chose to do our own thing, right? And kind of think of it like this, right? Then the nations kind of said, okay, since we have recognized our influence, let us play puppeteer. They're going to be the puppet and we're going to be the string master. So for example, if you look at these industries who owns, you know, clothing brands and music and all these things on the face of it, you would see Michael Jackson. You would see uh, Denzel Washington. You would see a, a Chris Brown. You would see a Beyonce or Rihanna, right? These types of individuals, Jennifer Lopez, all these individuals, right? But then they're just the puppet to get you to believe in this dream, right? They're the puppet on a string to get you to believe in this dream. Now, a lot of them always say, oh, I came from the tough backgrounds and blah, 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 right? But you never hear directors, you never hear their producers saying, I came from tough background. It's because they take individuals from normal backgrounds and they say, hey, you want to make sure your family eats better than everyone else? Come on. Come on. I need you to do X, Y, and Z. I need you to, but the whole name of the game is to influence your people in the wrong direction, to go the wrong direction. You see that straight and narrow path right there? You don't bring your people that into that direction. You bring them to the broad, okay? You bring them into the cares of this world. You bring them into the money. You bring them into the acting, the singing, the dancing. Everything that you see we wouldn't do, we need you to do to be our entertainer. The, isn't it crazy? And when you think of the word, wait, that's... They want us to be... You get it? Most of the children of Israel, especially in the U.S., they're wanting to go into the in 
entertainment field, right? It's because you are their entertainment. And as long as you remain in sin, the Most High has to entertain the devil doing all the things that the devil will because the devil has power over sin. So, and it's not that the Most High wants to sit by and watch because he has a cutoff point. But what I'm saying is the devil is entertaining everyone. But he's also making a mockery of the Most High saying, these are the people you chose? <laughs> these people who, who will tap, dance, and sing, make clothes, make all, will shoot a ball, run, catch a ball, slide, jump, hop, skip, sing. They'll do everything for everyone else, but they will never do it for you. That stings, doesn't it? But like I said, I am the, the, the toughest on my people. Love my people. But the reality is, at this point, you just got to cut people off. If they want to be foolish, let them be foolish. If they want to have no knowledge, I mean, Gen Z, I, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Gen Z, I think a lot of the technology that they have is, can be used for good, okay? But I do believe that Gen Z is going to be the greatest nation or the greatest generation that is withheld in the depths of hell. Why? Because Gen Z, the, even the children are raised on electronics. They're raised on Google. They're raised on this. They're raised on that, right? Everything that's electronic, and yet they still don't want to go the right direction. Isn't it crazy? And what I'm proving what I am sharing with you, brothers and sisters, I'm actually proving. But they said, you know what? We just don't want one Beyonce, one J-Lo. We don't want one, one Chris Brown. We want them all. How can we do this? Let's make social media where they can be in charge of whatever they do and they can share with the world and we can find our entertainers that way. And we're gonna have them dance. We're gonna have them do things that are crazy. We're gonna have them do all kinds of challenges. And, and, and you know what? Let's even throw in some money based on how many likes they get and how many times they share and how many views they get. And once they see they can get money for being viewed, they will never want to stop being viewed by the public. And they will always crave attention and they will push aside all the things that matter. So now we can say there are people who are wise to do evil, but have no knowledge of good. In the millennial generation in the U.S., there was, you know, a lot of gangs, a lot of drugs. Even with uh, Gen X, who we sit there and sit there and say, and they, they would swear that, you know, NWA kind of created that culture. Okay. Now, everyone was good with the music. People were selling drugs and doing evil things. 
but they weren't. And you see how it kind of like is just getting worse. And drugs is bad. <laughs> drugs is bad, brothers and sisters. Drugs is terrible. But what happens when you hook someone on something that they cannot see the evil in it? That's the greatest drug. Because half the people in the world knew that drugs were wrong. But social media is a drug and no one thinks it's wrong. Now Satan has gotten the world. Now, they, they all partook in expanding in the children of Israel's foolishness and their evil. Oh, you can dance? Hey, let me put you on TV. Instead of saying, why don't you learn about these laws we're making against you? Why don't you learn about, and, and, and you see, you've heard of generational wealth. Why don't you construct your families where your fathers and mothers don't hate their children and go out and kick them out at 16, 17, 18, 19? And why don't you actually have your parents start a business so your children can take it over like we do so you don't have to keep going broke every few lineages down the line? Right. But you see then, the children of Israel... Tell me I'm wrong. The children of Israel, my brothers and sisters, if this has not been you, praise the most high. But And and more than likely, this is you, what I'm about to say. And you're probably going to hate me, but I love you, okay? Every child of Israel, at least from when I'm being in America, okay, having been born in America, all right? Every child of Israel has parents that don't want their children to pass them. At least from millennials on back. Prove me wrong. <laughs> okay. And this is why the parents would say, we just want you to do good, but they would never teach you how to do it. What do you mean you want me to do good? You didn't show me anything. <laughs> You can't tell someone to be good and not show them what to do. Right? That makes you a hypocrite. You can't tell someone to swim and kick them in the water. You didn't teach them, which is what a lot of people do. <laughs> right? They just say swim, which I hope the most high really judges parents for that. Just throwing their children. That's never happened to me, that part with the swimming. But a lot of people learn that way. I had cousins push me in the water. <laughs> Not parents, but cousins, right? So that's traumatized. What part of traumatized? Where's the good in that? So you see, we are wise to do evil. But to do good... We have no care for, oh, I'm tired. Oh, I had a long day at work. Oh, this is stressing me out. Oh, I don't want to hear. Do you know, right, with my brothers and sisters, the children of Israel, whenever you say, I'm so tired to read or hear you out, but you take extra works, at, you take extra shifts at work, but you go out and hang out with your friends and go to clubs and drink, go to parties, right? You'll be tired then, though. Oh, I guess just not too tired to sin, but too tired to do something good, right? Because this is what the Most High is talking about. And so these powers that be, in Psalms 83, they said, hey, they don't like to read, put everything in a book. And let's indoctrinate them. Let's, and you know what the biggest piece of trash was? And some people are gonna hate me, Martin Luther King. You know why? 
because for so long they said, I have a dream. Do you know that's reverse psychology? It's that as long as you play, I have a dream, it's never going to become reality. Stupid. <laughs> it's never going to become a reality. I have a dream and you keep playing it year after year after year after year. I have a dream to be free. I have a dream to be a businessman. I have a dream to be this. I have a dream for my family to be better. Dream? Dream? A dream is not real. I mean, haven't they shown you that? United States over there, they've shown you, they call them dreamers. Everything they've dreamed of, you can go to the United States, get $15,000, you can get debit cards, no work, is a dream. It's a dream come true. But for you, it's a nightmare. Hmm. So they will, what? They will encourage you always, always to do evil. I mean, look, 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 right? And within the communities, right? Within the children of Israel communities, it was always kind of like, hey, Oh, I see you playing ball hooping, right? Oh, he's good in football. He got a good arm or he's a good running back or receiver. Now, let you, let's say, be in a chess club as an Israelite. So someone's going to clown you. It, let you play, let's say, soccer. Hmm. Let you be on a debate team, right? Like the movie Great Debaters, right? And it was always shun to show intelligence. I don't know if anyone's noticed that in Israel. When you are a child, it's shunned amongst your peers to show intelligence. And look what we have now, Gen Z. Teenagers killing kids. <laughs> what? Teenagers beating and assaulting people. It's the season of challenge, right? Isn't it TikTok was all about challenges? Challenge. They started me up. Challenge. Challenge. Something one can be accused of. Tick tock challenge. Satan created a platform where he can accuse you of more sin. Thank you. A challenge is a fault. Come on. And people, and you know what's scary? What's scary is, and Gen X and millennials, we were told that putting things on social media can get you to lose a job. Now, all of a sudden, TikTok challenges every week. And Satan's like, I know what you heard, but I, I need more to accuse you on. I need more accusations. Because those millennials, listen here, those millennials, they started reading. And if you follow behind the millennials, Gen Z, you'll be even greater than them. And that was the point. That's the point, because millennials, we're supposed to be the teachers. Gen X, baby boomers, they, I don't even know what they were doing. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't know what they were doing. But it started with us, millennials, the teachers. 
men of the Most High. Now we're trying to teach the older, and we're trying to teach the younger. But you see, Satan is accusing people. And while you're looking at challenges, right, things are happening in the world. Remember, they said, oh, well, they're foolish anyway. They're not going to serve their God. So when you read to them Revelation 2 and 9 and tell them, I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, they don't care. If a church leader says this, they don't care. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Man, they do not care, but you see, when it's on the news, see, the Most High, and it's so sad, the Most High has to get people's attention this way. 40,000 uh, Palestinians have been murdered. And and here's what I would like to, to say to you, Rabbi, since you're, you're quoting scripture, okay? The one that's relevant to me is woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. And if you'd like to dive into a little more scripture, I think what's relevant is Revelation 3, 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. And I'm speaking directly to you, Rabbi Shmuley. Why in the world do we need? <laughs> you see, the truth is here, you see. And you're, you, you're going to accept it. And that other scripture she was referring to was Isaiah 5 and 9. Okay. I'll get that. Uh, excuse me. It was Isaiah 5, right? Yep. Not five and nine, was it? Five and twenty, excuse me. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now, these individuals, now, Despite what you may think, and I'm gonna I'm gonna share this right because it is weird, right? How they allowed this to go on to the news segment, <laughs> but hey, that's for another conversation. The scriptures is making noise. Why won't the Arabs acknowledge who the children of Israel? Why won't the Arabs, the Imams, teach the lineage of Jacob? Why? Why? Because they say, hey, <laughs> hey, you know what? Let's make them a remembrance no more. American Jewish pedophiles escape and run and hide in Israel where they are given safe harbor by the government. That is a fact. They will not. So if you wanted to know why they are the synagogue of Satan, not just amongst what, um, let's say, lying on the most high and the people of the most high. But here's another one. American Jewish pedophiles escape and run and hide in Israel, where they are given safe harbor by the government. That is a fact. They will not extradite our pedophiles. That is an absolute nonsense, given the many billions of dollars that we give to Israel that we can't get back the men that are raping children. Okay? And 
I can't imagine a single person that would think otherwise, that that is not a nonsense and that we should not be giving back those pedophiles. And to be clear, it wasn't Kenneth Owens who researched and came up with this. It was an incredible Jewish organization that looked into this, talked about how wrong it was and brought it into the mainstream media. If you don't like that Israel is harboring pedophiles, that's not on me. That is on the state of Israel, okay? Again, I am condemning the that, state that of is... Israel for harboring American pedophiles and not extraditing them. Do you have a disagreement there, Rabbi? If so, please share. An absolute lie and fabrication against Israel. CBS News teamed up with a Jewish organization and came to this conclusion because they were the ones that okay. brought it to the forefront. So courageous Jewish people who are- Do we really need someone to read wrong. off the internet Jewish in a debate? Katie this is, is not your show, this is a debate. <laughs> Now, I've been looking up and I have like, you know, following social media that's from the USA. I didn't see that. I didn't see this happen. So this was juicy to me. And then I did a little searching. And then I said, A CBS News investigation has real. uncovered a loophole that allows accused and convicted American pedophiles. A CBS News investigation has uncovered a loophole that allows accused and convicted American pedophiles to escape justice by moving to Israel. Jewish Community Watch, an organization that hunts down accused pedophiles who flee to Israel from the U.S., exploiting a process called Law of Return, whereby any Jewish person can move to Israel and automatically gain citizenship. Yom Tov pled guilty in 2002 to sexually abusing and committing lewd acts against three other boys. He served jail time, but when he was released, he violated his probation and, according to JCW, fled to Israel with help from individuals within the Orthodox Jewish community. The same thing that's going on in the Catholic Church right now around the world, the exact same thing happens in our community. The rabbis say, it's, uh, you know what, he promised he's going to go for therapy, he's never going to do it again. Boom, he's in another community. A few years later, he's at the same thing, and we hear more allegations that this person continued to abuse children. And often, those abusers end up in Israel. Why would someone want to help one of these pedophiles escape? Oftentimes, there's some sort of community incentive. Either, either somebody owes them a favor or someone in the community, let's say an institution, has covered up for them in the past, and they know that if this goes to court, there's a lot of civil liability coming down the line. Shauna accuses the Israeli police of not prioritizing accused pedophiles on the run. Why do you have to be the ones that do this? Because nobody else is. That's really, I don't have any better answer than that. And if you guys weren't doing it? Yeah, nobody would do it. If American officials... love how they highlight how everyone else is wrong uh, or excuse me how the true children of Israel is wrong but they like to highlight only good things that certain individuals do right like this so growing up in the United States you always heard that black and brown people were always like, we're just thugs. You know, we're we're the lowest of the low. I mean, we we're always in prison. They talk about daddy issues and mama issues and all these things. And then I come across an article that someone shared with me, and I said, no way. And so. This is Prison Policy Initiative 2024, right? This is for the United States. You wouldn't believe. <laughs> so something's happening here in the world where the truth is being revealed. So I'm going to look up women, right? Now, this is March 5th, 2024. So there's if you're from outside of the United States, the United States is just a harbor for, you know, want to lock people up for everything, right? Prison and jails. Jails is there's a court and then they hold you in the jails. And some of the minor crimes are for uh, 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 jail. And then the big crimes are for prisons, right? And obviously we know that immigration number is quite bigger, but anywho, <laughs> um, I thought this 
was really, really interesting. And it gives a number here. Mind you, this is 2024. It says, although the data do not exist to break down the whole pie by race or ethnicity, we know that Black and American Indian or Alaskan Native women are consistently overrepresented in state and federal prisons. Women in prison are 48% white. Wait, 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 wait a minute now. 17% Black women, 19% Hispanic women, I'm a little confused because we kind of like we kind of like told people for decades that one group of people were worse than the other. Now, okay, the numbers there for the men, I for some strange reason I didn't see the the numbers for the men, but this is what they gave from 2020, and I would think that these numbers are kind of trickling down, okay? Which, uh, don't, don't be the one to shoot the messenger, but it's where back then it used to be where what they would call black people are, let's say, way more what they would say uh, way more um, amongst those to uh, to 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 commit crimes than Hispanics, but the women are more than the blacks and then the white. So I'm kind of confused because this number says. Black imprisonment rate in the U.S. has fallen a third since 20. So every year it keeps falling, 34%, which means that whole narrative that people are thugs and gangsters and, and, and you know, degenerates and deadbeats, that doesn't exist around the black and brown community, specifically the black community. So, the only thing that is upholding children of Israel to do evil is what? Is entertainment. I'm convinced that if there was no rap, if there was no Orn B, if there was no dancing and popping and all kinds of stuff, I'm convinced like 80% of the sin would be gone. I'm truly convinced. Yes, I believe in my people that much. And I know how much that music plays an influence. Mind you, Satan was uh, one of the, the angel over music, right? So he knows how to make things stir up the soul. But anywho, I thought that this was so interesting. And I said, it's kind of crazy. When I first saw this, I said, man, this is wild. But then I sat and thought about it with the scripture. And I'm like, you read what you sow. And then I teach you guys that everything is starting to come back to people. Now, but, but, but follow me here, okay? Remember, do you recognize how in the black and brown communities and the what they would call underprivileged places in the world, whether you're going to Nepal, whether you're going to Singapore or certain places in Indonesia, America, uh, South America, Honduras, Venezuela, right? They want to do the Planned Parenthood, right? Well, let's just take the United States. Why do you want to do Planned Parenthood so badly? Why is women's rights so important? You ready? You ready? 48% of women in prison are 48% white women, which means what? 
what they would call minority women already have taken over more than white women. That means more black and brown women are free than white women. Which means they would have more children which means they'll overpopulate. And so now, and here's my thought, because you're tied in a little more now, with the immigration, now they bring in these immigrants, these people who the most High said he would bring them in because they're evil, to cause chaos. Hey, isn't that kind of interesting? You say women's rights, but you want to kill the children is because close to half of yours are in prison. Huh. Interesting, isn't it? Very, very interesting. Anywho. They said, let us cut them off from being a nation that they remember no more. Here's another one. So today we're going to talk about a documentary that I just watched, which I think everybody should see. So it started off with, so today we're going to talk about a doc. Check this out. So today we're going to talk about a documentary that I just watched, which I think everybody should see. So it started off with the root cause of Pearl Harbor. Then it goes into a part that I didn't know. Then we think of all the people who oppose the Federal Reserve and what happened with them. Then it goes into this report, which debunks everything that happened in Auschwitz. That these facilities never, in fact, contained hydrogen cyanide gas. Then we have this fellow, David Cole, in his 1992 documentary, which talks about how these holes were put in after the war. Are those the original holes in the ceiling? No. They've been rebuilt? Yes. Okay. Uh, after the war? After the war. Hmm. It's interesting. But someone could say they use Zyklon B. Zyklon B was a bug spray used in World War II in war camps to kill lice and clothing to combat disease. Then it gets weird when you find out there was a soccer team, a piano, a movie theater, and much more all at this camp. Then we have stuff like this, which it says don't question anything, which is kind of like 2020. And lastly, I'm going to leave it with some testimonials. Listen to this. Yes. They're organized very well. Hmm. And this one too. These are survivors. We had a piano put into a, not just a piano, a grand piano was brought into block one. Once that was built, that new block, the downstairs room was assigned for theater. They said, they're going to build a movie in the camp. And the president, <laughs> and the president said, said, only you must be crazy. They're going to make a movie for us. <laughs> That's quite an interesting quote. A lie told often enough becomes the truth. Lenin. Hmm. No, 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 no. You don't believe me that someone said, let's make them forget real troubles, real pain, slavery, taken away from family, shipping away here and there, right? Let's forget the real people. And let's just tell them to believe what we say. But listen to this. So you're going to have to read because he's speaking in Hebrew. And I'll, I'll play along. And it says, We have a great problem by fabricating lies about the Holocaust. Global Zionism has succeeded in distorting historical truth in its favor. What? This was 2018. Throughout this period, in which Hollywood succeeded in influencing global public opinion. I told you, if we take out the entertainment, I promise you, everyone will try to at least give it a shot to come and serve the true God. 
you take out Hollywood, you take out entertainment, everyone will run to God. I, I believe this with all my heart. Take out the distraction. People will beg to serve the most high. In creating the myth, this is a Jewish rabbi, that Hollywood did what? They created the myth of the Holocaust, which they interpreted to their advantage. It says the Islamic Republic of Iran was steadfast and exerted efforts in the struggle against the global myth of the Holocaust. So that means that Iran was the only one to say that this never happened. Do you understand that means the Iranians would be the only ones to tell who the children of Israel are? And that's why when all the things happened years ago with the black and brown people and the people being killed and the racial protests in the United States, Iranians were the only ones to reach out to the black families and say, hey, we'll let you come and live in Iran where you don't have to be afraid. They were the only ones. And I remember seeing the documentary on press TV that they were letting black people and black families and they were representing them and they were giving them money in the United States courts for lawyers. The only Muslim country when it says they have come against our people. Did you know that the Medianites, the Medes, the Elamites who make up all of Iran, the Persians, which people would call, they are not in Psalms 83, but all the Arab countries are. Anyone notice that? Yep. Anyone notice why? In any European structural country, Iranians are always the threat. Arabs, the Saudis think that Iran is always a threat, even though they're trying to be snakes and make deals with them. It's because they're all a part of this, except for Iran. Hey. And I'm telling you, <laughs> brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the truth is out there. The truth is out there. This is why I sit there and say there is no need to convince people of the truth. You don't have the time for truth. I don't have time for you. That's where it needs to clearly be. You don't have tr time for the most high. I don't have time for you. What do you want? Get to the point not about the most high, not about the kingdom to come, not about the new heaven and earth, not about the return of Christ. Leave me alone. It's foolishness. It's foolishness because the truth is here. And guess what? It said those nations, right? <laughs> Those nations, what was it, Jeremiah 17? Uh, let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. It was it Jeremiah 17, was it?
16. Y'all, I think y'all know where I'm going. Y'all know where I'm going. Look, Jeremiah 16. It says, Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them, and after will I send for many hunters. They shall hunt them from every mountain and every hill out of the holes of the rocks. And for mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. First, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land. That's all of Psalms 83. And they have filled mine inheritance with carcasses of detestable and abominable things. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles, when the time of the Gentiles is up, it's now, shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. What? So then... You go into the scripture, you shall pull the skirt of a Jew. What? Thus saith the Lord of hosts in Zechariah 8, 23, And those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard God is with you. How are you going to hear that God is with us? Because a lie is being erased and you will be presented with the truth worldwide publicly. Watch what I say. Watch what I say. And it's already happening now. It's already happening now. And for my brothers and sisters who are the children of Israel, the time of waking up Israel is over because these Gentiles, this is prophecy. They have to go to the children of Israel to follow you. <laughs> okay. All right. But anywho, we'll save the other portions. Ah, I need to share with you this last video. And tell me what you think about this. Warning. Graphic content. I said, when the missiles of war shall lighten the paths of truth, brothers and sisters, this is the war on the true promise. And everything that was hidden is coming to light. I pray that you're on the true side of light and willing to stand up in God's fight. Next lesson. 
children of Israel and the blessings that they lost and how more detail of how the history of Israel was stolen and erased and replaced. Shabbat Shalom.